Okay, so who is this guy, Fustal Collange, that I keep talking about? And why would anybody care? Well, he was born in 1830 and died in 1889. He was educated at the École Normale Supérieure and the French School at Athens. By profession, he was a teacher, a professor. Chronologically, he taught at the University of Strasbourg, the École Normale Supérieure, the University of Paris, the Sorbonne, and he ended his career as the director of the École Normale Supérieure, being appointed in 1880. Why is he significant? Basically, because of one book, in my opinion, and who he taught. Uh, this is the actual book, The Ancient City by Fustol de Collange. Uh, a study on the religion, laws, and institutions of Greece and Rome. Translated by Willard Small, 12th edition. This is the 1901 version. I think there were other ones. As a result of that particular work, he can easily be considered the grandfather of really three different fields of study that uh, are familiar to us. One would be postmodernist history, although I don't think any Historians like to refer to it that way. Let's call it non-narrative history. Um, that's what they tend to call it. Which is a focus lot not on the great men, as history had been up to that time, but on the more niggling details of history, rather than trying to put things into a chronological order. Um, things like the economy and ecology and what have you. Less directly, he could be considered an anthropologist. In fact, having studied at the French School of Athens, he would have to call him an anthropologist of a sort, uh, particularly a cultural anthropologist. And he could also be considered the grandfather of sociology, because one of his more prominent students was Emile Durkheim, who was the father of modern sociology. The Ancient City was a groundbreaking work in many regards, um, principal among them being the reliance upon no secondary sources for his information. Uh, Collange insisted on going to the original sources. That's one of the problems a lot of people would run into in reading his book. Um, the footnotes and uh, much of the text is in the original Greek and Latin not a big problem for me because the Greek and Latin are largely the same words and I did study Latin and even though I know no Greek I can pretty much figure out what he's talking about. The other important thing to consider when reading any book and I think the ancient city is a prime example is when it was written and what was going on when it was written. Now, it was published in 1873, so let's assume that it was begun in the mid to late 1860s and finished somewhere near to 1873, uh, perhaps 1872, perhaps into early 1873. At some point during the writing of this work, some very momentous events occurred in French history. Napoleon III was deposed as a result of the loss of the Franco-Prussian War. Alsace-Lorraine was ceded to Germany that uh, was created as a nation as a result of that war. Uh, there was the Paris Commune, um, the birth of the Third Republic, which was very bloody and very painful. Essentially a French Civil War, although not many people think of it that way. And if you read the book carefully, you can infer, although it isn't stated, that in some respects it's a reply to Marx. That's just an inference that I take on my own. Nobody else has ever said that. But he has uh, some incredible insights into the origins of so much that we today take for granted, like the origins of the concept of private property, marriage, customs, rituals, um, 
the list is almost endless. Things that we are today very familiar with and take for granted were innovations uh, in the time period that he covers, which is the very earliest incarnations of uh, Greek and Roman civilization for the most part. To a lesser extent, he looks at uh, the Indian culture and uh, their government and society. He's uh, got a huge focus on the religious commonalities between these three cultures. One of my main complaints in reading it my first time was his almost deliberate uh, disinclination to include the Persians who were also Indo-European. Uh, I think because, in some cases, what he would have found if he had included the Persians would have contradicted a few of his major assertions. So, I'm not saying by any means that the ancient city is a book that should be taken on faith or as irreputable, shall we say. Just, uh, it, it's a wonderful place for a person to begin if they want to really understand the world we live in and how it got the way it is. I was going to talk about Emile Durkheim, but I don't think I will. So I'm going to wrap it up right now. And uh, I have something to say, I think, more about Collange in a different context later.